What's the word, y'all? This draft class had a lot of really good rookies. Now, we're only two weeks into their NBA career, but a lot of them have impressed me, and today, we're grading them. Not all 58 picks, obviously, but but the top 12 players we're going to be grading. Uh, I do, I do want to say this is based on the first couple weeks. So this is not a projection video. I, I, a lot of these guys have a lot of potential. I'm not here to put a ceiling on any of them. But I'm saying based on what I've seen with these eyes, where do I have them right now? Leave a like, subscribe. On the Kenny Beats podcast, we did, did this exact thing, but with offseason acquisitions. So Damian Lillard. Slash Drew Holiday, Porzingis. The link will be in the description. Go show us some love. We are the seventh rate sports podcast in the world. We're trying to get to top five. So show some love. Thanks. I don't want to show you who we have on the list just, just yet. So we're going to take it one step at a time with a big fella, Victor Webinyama. What can I say if, if we're going S through D tier? Because nobody's going to be F tier. I'm not that crazy of a person. I'm going to put him in S tier. The hype has been real. He's been great. Um, they, sometimes they struggle to get him the ball when it matters the most. And yesterday, Zach Collins got a lot more touches than he probably should have. But for the most part, he has lived up to expectations. Um, the 38-point game we dropped the video on in this channel. And he's been very, very good offensively and defensively. So he's an S tier. And y'all, and y'all, I, I got to say, Chet is too. Chet is shooting like 60% from the field, 60% from three. And he's averaging like two, three blocks a game. If we go strictly off the first two weeks of their careers, Chad has been amazing as well. He's exceeded all of my personal expectations. And though he's not a 2023 draft class guy, he's been in the running for rookie of the year so far. I think most people probably give it to Wimby. And I think Chet will be a solid second at the moment. Who knows what the season's going to look like. But I got to put some respect on Chet because he's been way more than I expected. Again, 60% for three is not something that's going to sustain itself, but if we're just looking at the first two weeks, yeah, it makes sense. Will those be the only rookies to hit S tier? Spoiler alert, yes. <laughs> those are the only two guys that's S tier, at least. Let's talk about the second overall pick in the 2023 draft, Brandon Miller. A, a surprise for me, as somebody that doesn't watch a lot of college basketball, I heard a lot of people talk great about School Henderson, School Henderson, School Henderson. There's no way Brandon Miller could go number two. He's not going to be good. The first two weeks, he's been he's been very, very good. He got his first official start of the season today as I'm recording this video, and he looked pretty good, man. He has a nice balance of all three levels of the floor as far as scoring goes. Defensively, he's, he's really nice, and I like some of his finishes around the basket. He's been impressive. Like 13 points per game, which I think is third amongst rookies right now, so he deserves to be probably an A tier. Let's do it. Brandon Miller, A tier. Third overall pick in this year's draft, draft was uh, Scoo Henderson. And Scoot is out with an injury right now, but in the sample size that we have of him, it did not look good. Again, I mentioned this before when we were talking about Wimby. I don't overreact to the first couple weeks, so I believe that the Scoot still has the potential to be an absolute stud. But again, great on the first couple weeks. It didn't look pretty. Um, it's going to take us some time to adjust to the game, the speed of the game, which is crazy because he's super athletic. But um, th there are a lot of moments when I watched him in the few games that he played before his injury where I genuinely question his decision-making offensively and defensively. He got lost on both sides quite a bit. Uh, Given time, luckily he's playing for the, the Portland Trailblazers, the team that is in, in, empowering him to be him. And with time and reps, he should be fine. But based on now, I think I got to put Scoot down here, man. Just based on the first two week sample size. We do this again halfway through the season, and I'm, I'm assuming he's going to be a lot higher than this. But right now... This is just where it is. Next on our list is going to be Amin Thompson, who was the fourth overall pick to the Houston Rockets. Um, the Houston Rockets have so many players in the roster that he's kind of getting lost in the shuffle where he's averaging about 14 to 15 minutes per game. And in those minutes, there are good signs. There's bad signs. He's also missed a couple games now with an injury. So um, I don't really know if they released the timetable or anything. But in the, the frame that we've got, it, it wasn't super impressive. Um, he does obviously still have all the athletic tools. He has the playmaking that we really like. The, the big question about him and his brothers was their shooting ability, and both of them have not showed that a ton so far. But because Amin's reps have been super limited, we haven't really been able to see him play to maybe the, the place he can be. I'm struggling with this one, man. I don't know if he goes here or he goes here. I I, I think I'm going to start off him. Shout out to the guy. Y'all know I've been, I'm rooting for him and his brother quite heavily. But again, I got to be realistic here. So I might have to put him down in D tier based on the first couple weeks of his career. His brother, though. 
His brother is doing everything outside of shooting the ball. <laughs> Get into the basket, block his shots, stealing the ball, playing defense, uh, uh, rebounding, assisting. He has been empowered by the Detroit Pistons to play his game. And he's starting, and he looks amazing as well. Like, he looks like an all-defensive caliber player and two weeks into his NBA career, which you can't say that about a lot of people. He's one of my most fun watches in this entire draft class. I think Wimby's number one. He's probably number two. And Chet is probably number three as far as how fun I have while watching him play ball because he's everywhere all over the court. He just had a four by five game yesterday. A four by five. He was one one steal, one block away from a five by five. When he had a five by five, since Yusuf Nurkic did it, what, seven years ago? He was two stats away from it, which is crazy. Um, So... I'm putting him in the A tier, man. If he can only learn how to shoot throughout the course of his career, he's going to be such a dangerous player on the court. Next on the list, I'm going to get Anthony Black. Now, some of these guys, now I'm rethinking the, the I'm in Thompson down here now. And the reason I say that is because Anthony Black also falls into the camp of players that haven't been getting a ton of opportunity. But in the opportunity that, that Anthony Black has got, he's been really good. He has basically not missed much from the field. He got his first official NBA start the other night against the LA Lakers. And in it, he was like a plus 32 from, from uh, as far as on off goal, which is insane because the game, I mean, it wasn't a close game, but it wasn't a super blowout either. But he hasn't had a lot of time. So I don't want to put him down here because of he's not widely in a rotation at the moment. So I, I think based on everybody's scale is going to be different have i mentioned that but based on the sample size that we have of him i'm impressed how about that i say the same thing about Derek lively based on the sample size we have of Derek, Derek lively i'm extremely impressed the first game of the year he went against victor webinyama and for most of it he was the talk of the town over wimby and though his minutes have fluctuated between like 15 minutes in a single game versus like the other day we had 28 minutes like it changes a lot with jason kidd and the system and stuff when he does play and he does get good minutes he has looked really really good so i'll probably put him in b tier also in b tier oh b tier See, okay, I'm thinking about Kaysen Wallace. Kaysen Wallace is the homie. He was, what, the 10th overall pick to the OKC Thunder. The man has not missed a shot this season. I mean, that's not te technically true, but he doesn't miss. He hasn't missed, and he's playing good defense. But it would feel weird to put him on the same tier as Brandon Miller and Asar Thompson. So I'm going to put him in the B tier. He's looked really good. You know, making the real rotation as a rookie in OKC when they have so many young players is a feat, and he's doing that. So I'm going to put him in the B tier. Bilal Koulibaly. Um... Bilal has showed us real good stretches of really good defense as well. Also, a guy that is not getting a crazy, crazy amount of minutes. His offensive game is a lot to be desired. I've changed my mind. Scoot, you're going to the C tier. I've changed my mind. Scoot, you're going to the C tier with these other fellas. Uh, with Bilal Kulabali and Amin Thompson. Because it just feels so harsh to do that. That's just I'm just a generous guy. I'm just a generous guy. How about that? Keontae George is next on our list. I think I also put him C tier. I was so excited for his play from Summer League. And obviously, he's not tearing it up like that because the, the play is different between the Summer League rosters versus the real NBA rosters. But he's been really solid. And they've given him a lot of opportunity to kind of play some point guard, which we really, really like. Um, but I, I couldn't say he's on the scale of these guys. So I think he'll just be high in the C tier. And lastly, the sleeper, I think, of the entire draft, so far at least, it's Marcus Sasser, who don't even, him and Keontae George don't even got pictures of themselves in their real NBA jerseys. But Marcus Sasser has been incredible. So good that Killian Hayes better count his days because I think Marcus Sasser should be starting over him. That's how good Marcus Sasser has been. Or that's how bad Killian Hayes has been. It's one or the other. But these are the top guys. I mean, a lot of the other rookies aren't getting a crazy amount of minutes to even have a sample size, sample size big enough to be here. But I'm excited about this class. As you can see, two S tiers is rare. I mean, I can't say there's a lot of draft classes that have two S tiers through the first couple weeks. The A tiers are lo I love, the B tiers I love, and the C tiers, just give them more time and more opportunity. I'm sure they'll be better. But uh, we also got like Jairus Walker or Taylor Hendricks who were top 10-ish picks and haven't been given opportunity outside of garbage time. So that's why they didn't make the list. The Jet Howard also hasn't been getting a ton of time. Grady Dick has got a good amount of time. Actually, I should put Grady on the list. Actually, it's probably better that I don't. Uh, it's probably better that I don't. Uh, just, just struggle to start off. Um, we also have seen a good amount of Jordan Hawkins. He also, also started a game this season. So shout out to Jay Hawk, one of my guys. Um, known as a shooter, struggling to hit his shot. But he's got all the confidence in the world, which we love. And he's playing decent defense, which we appreciate. Because that was one of the biggest question marks. Jaime Hawkins also has got a good amount of play. But I haven't 
sat down and watched a ton of his film enough for me to put him on the, the grading scale just yet. And as I look through the rest of the rookies, those are the ones that have played the most minutes. I don't think I'm forgetting about anybody, which is great. Unless there's some crazy undrafted player that I just completely look past. But I don't think that's the case. So let me know what you think. Where would you rank these rookies? Did we do good? Were we too generous? You let me know in the comment section. I'll be down there as always. See y'all tomorrow. Peace.